And Alex joins me now. So, Alex, it's fascinating looking at that poll, isn't it? Because what it shows to me is that the Tory parliamentary party may have moved on from Boris Johnson. It doesn't feel like the Tory party members have. Well, if you look at um, the margin of victory between Boris and Jeremy Hunt in 2019, Mm. we're actually at the same level of support. So... Nothing in Boris's uh, popularity has shifted in the last three years. Nothing that's really telling. And also, I think it's really important to realize that uh, Boris didn't actually lose the support of the House. He, vo- he won a vote of no confidence in June 2022, yep. as we know. And there was something of an Italian summer. We've kind of drifted towards an Italian style of republic where we, we like the idea of having a government unelected every 12 months or so. And that's probably due to the weather and the Prosecco on the terraces of the House of Commons where people just lost their minds. Mm. But I think it's, uh, I think it's important to realize that um, in, a, in, in, a, in a, a political party, the membership really does matter. And what we're trying to do is to say to people that uh, there, are, there is a constitutional avenue for Boris to be brought back on the ballot. And we are definitely sure that if he was put back on the ballot, he would win, as the poll suggests. Yeah, so this is the campaign that has been led by Lord Crudis. He is a major Tory donor, of yeah. course. He's met with Boris at Chequers uh, since he announced his intention to step down as Prime Minister. Is there any realistic chance of success or is it more about making a point to the party? Because well, usually you start off by making a point, And if your point carries any water, usually you end up to a positive conclusion. I think the, the thing that's been remarkable is two things. The moment that Boris resigned, 14,000 people wrote directly to central office, according to The Sun, saying that they wanted Boris back. Well, actually the question that we're all asking is, what the hell do you think you're doing? Um, And so uh, the petition that was started by by Peter Crudus um, was also telling because very quickly we got to the number 10,000, which is crucial because Mm. uh, Schedule 9 of the Conservative Party's constitution says that if over 10,000 people of of the membership vote through a petition or propose a, a petition to change the rules, the Conservative Party has to abide by it. So we're not whistling in the wind. We're using the numbers that we receive very quickly. Uh, we're using very strong data because we're clearing out all the names that, uh, of people who are not party members. So the data is rock solid. We have nearly 20,000, twice the number of petitioners who signed. And what we're saying to the Conservative Party uh, leadership is you have to take this into account. And, and what are they saying to you? Well, they say officially that they are, they are being neutral, but it's a very different uh, thing to say that you're neutral and actively work towards being neutral. Because actually what we're saying is that we have the numbers, we've got the members, and we've got the, the, the groundswell of opinion that tells us that Boris is still seen as the leader by most people, not just in the Conservative Party, but broadly across mm. the country. And in fact, I, uh, because I do watch your show, Excellent. And uh, what, I was, what I thought was really interesting was when you went around the country, the straw polls that you, uh, mm. you engaged in were extremely telling. You had people there, when you asked them, Sunak or Liz, they would go, well, Sunak, backstabber, probably Liz. And the moment you said, but well, what about Boris? Mm. Everybody Their eyes spont- lit up. spontaneously, spontaneously yeah, yeah. said, we love Boris. And this is the interesting thing. It's a different... He's a different beast operating in a slightly different universe to, to, to your average politician. He is liked. It's very difficult for people outside the political bubble to realize that this man is difficult to dislike. There is a contrived mm. hatred of Boris, and these are the people that you and I might meet uh, in, in uh, posh places yes. in London. And the people who run the media, you exactly. have to admit that. And so, and so uh, uh, the, the, when, when we speak to people outside of this bubble, we realize that Boris is actually a light character. It's not a question of competence, though. For me, it's much more, much more important. The principle of democracy is that we elect a leader. That leader has to be judged not by the people in Parliament necessarily or in the media bubble. It has to, they have to be judged by the electorate. Absolutely. A lot of people might say, well, he lost the confidence of the House, but that's not true. 
He didn't lose the conference of the House. There was no vote that took place to show that he lost it. In fact, he won the vote of no confidence. Yeah. And on top of that, he lost no yeah. votes at all. And, and the media didn't even accept this for a single second, did they? And when it comes to Pincher, obviously, some, a scandal that you, you were uh, very aware of, it didn't matter what it was, was it? They, they were going to find a minor scandal to turn into something that Tory MPs who were always against Boris Johnson yeah. could use. It was death by a thousand cuts. It was. And I think the, what, what I hear quite often is that it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. But actually, if you think about um, the scandals as they are uh, on, on Boris and the reason why we have the privileges committees trying to cut uh, uh, to essentially stripping out, strip him out of, of mm -hmm. the House of Commons. Which is a disgrace. It is a disgrace. Uh, it's essentially trying to, to kill a man whilst he's yeah. down. Liz Truss, by the way, if she becomes Prime Minister, she has to scrap that Privileges Committee inquiry, doesn't she? No, but let's hope that she doesn't. I mean, she, I'm sure she's competent, and I'm sure that Sunak, mm -hmm. Sunak is competent as well, but that's not what we you want. You still think there's a chance for Boris well, to save Prime Minister? Well, the, the, the point is that... I are, mean, he's got the moving trucks. He's well, he obviously given well, up. Well, there's, there's, um, th this is one of the things I was going to say to him. I'm reading the, uh, the biography of Henry IV, mm. a very um, obscure king of England, but there is a Richard II... Uh, exiled him and stripped him of all his lands and he was forced to go to Calais for 10 years and a bishop came to him and said well this you have to come back and fight for your seat and he came back and changed the game and he uh, he became king of England and arrested Richard II who was a terrible king so, so the book says but essentially what I'm saying is that uh, Boris should get that kind of gumption behind him he has the 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 the, the support of the large majority of the Conservative Party membership, he didn't lose uh, uh, the confidence of the House. And in my view, on a, on, on a, in a, in a, a two-horse race against Keir Starmer, he would win hands down. So he has to remain. We have to tell him that we do like him. We want him to remain as leader. And if he is going to lose the premiership, it's going to be in a fair fight against the, oppo the, 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 the leader of the opposition. Fascinating stuff. Alex Story, former Olympic rower and Tory parliamentary candidate. Absolute pleasure to have you in the studio tonight. My pleasure.